Hi, my name's Michelle. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to be talking about masking. You may have heard the expression, everything old is new again. It's a little like that with masking. Masking is a simple technique that's been around for a while, but I'm going to show you some new and different ways it's being used now to create backgrounds for cards and scrapbook pages. But first I'm going to start with a brief demonstration on traditional masking for those of you who aren't familiar with it. The way masking has been used traditionally is to layer images without overstamping your image that you have in the foreground. It's the exact opposite of, let's say, painting, where you paint your background first and then you keep adding images till you have your images in your foreground. In masking, it's the exact opposite of that. You start with the image that you want in your foreground and you move to the background. The way that's done, for example, here I have a bird and I've stamped it in blue ink. And let's say I want to add this heart image behind it, but I don't want to overstamp the heart on my bird image. How I would do that is um, I would stamp my bird again on a, just a piece of scrap paper and I'd cut it out. And then I'd use some repositional adhesive or temporary adhesive and I would uh, put it to the back of my bird image and lay that down. Now I'm going to ink up my heart stamp here. Doing this upside down is a little different. And then you just would, wherever you want that to appear, stamp your heart image. Okay, now let's say we want to add some color here, but we don't want to overstamp the heart image. Once again, you would stamp your heart image on a piece of scrap paper. You would uh, apply some repositional adhesive and you place that over your heart image. Okay. And let's say I wanted to add um, just some yellow shadow or shading behind that. Um, I'm going to use, this is Summer Sun and my stipple brush. And you could just, and don't worry if you get it on those masks. That's what they're for. Okay. I'll give you an idea. Okay, so now I'm finished, and if I take off these pieces and lay them aside, you can see how um, I've layered those images, but they haven't overprinted each other, and that is what masking is traditionally. Okay, like I said before, everything old is new again, and this is a perfect example of that. This is a new product from Heidi Swap and their repositionable mask that you can use over and over again. They are so cool. I just really love the effects that you're able to create with these. What they are, are shapes that are, I suppose, laser cut from acetate and they have a sticky adhesive on the back. And you just um, apply them to your cardstock and you um, stick them down there. And then you just put your ink over the top uh, different ways you can do that. You can use a brayer and you could brayer some ink over the top of it or you could use a stipple brush and stipple your ink on. You could use acrylic paint and paint over these masks and then when they're dry um, you just pull them up and put them back on the paper they came with and so you can store them so you can use them for another project. Um, this was my sample I was working with earlier, so you can see what I did is I, I laid the image down there and I used one of these color box cat eye pads. They're, I like to use these because they're really small and easy to work with. Um, I had this laying down here earlier when I was practicing for this video. And I just uh, applied the ink just directly to the paper like that. Of course I had my bird image on here too. And then when I pulled it up, it gives you the shape. It's so cool. I just, I just love these. If they get dirty, you just use a wet wipe or something and clean them up. And you can use them over and over and over again. Here is a card I made with that particular mask. As you can see, I used that blue ink. And I think I also spritzed some brown ink on the top of that just to further age the paper a little bit. And here is a bookmark that I've made. I haven't quite finished it because I haven't laminated it yet. But that was created with this mask. Um, I started out with a piece of blue printed scrapbook paper. It had a very faint blue design on it. And then I used a 
background stamp that was like French script and I stamped on it and then I put the mask down and I used some pink ink pink chalk ink and I just went all around my mask and then I moved it down here lower on the paper and did the same and then when I pulled the mask up I had my background paper it's just such a cool effect I love it it's like a really soft shape and it's great for creating background paper for your cards and also for your scrapbook pages so I've been working with those a lot and I really liked how they were looking but I wanted more shapes to work with and so I just started making my own little mask um, this card that I created hopefully you can see the star shapes in the back round started out with a piece of patterned scrapbook paper and I used my, a couple of punches that I had some star punches these are from Stamping Up and I just punched some cardstock out I applied my temporary adhesive, put them down on my cardstock, and inked over the top of them, and then I pulled the stars up, and so then I had that background that I created. You could even punch out of some, then you can use your cardstock that you punched over and over again. You might try punching out a piece of acetate. They're, it's a little harder to punch out with the hand stamps, but you could use your cuddle bug, which is something I did with this. I used my cuddle bug die and I punched out some shapes and then I applied them to a piece of scrapbook paper again which was pattern and then I put red ink over the top of it and this is the card I created with these shapes so I've been having a lot of fun creating my own mask to make background paper for my projects here is a scrapbook page that I did I'm not sure how I don't have my camera back far enough to hold the sh show the whole page. I'll take a picture of that and show it on my blog too. But I started out with this scrapbook paper, which I really liked because it reminded me of a pattern print from an old dress, a vintage dress. And here's just a side note. If you're doing heritage scrapbooking, just because your photos are sepia printed or they're black and white, don't feel like you have to just scrapbook in colors of black and white and uh, browns. Um, don't be afraid to use your color in your heritage scrapbooks. In fact, I think it almost makes the photos pop more when you use color because they are so monotone and uh, brown and black and white. When you use color with them, they just really pop. Anyway, getting back to masking, what I did was I just used, um, I think I used my, here, I used this one. I used the Sizzix dye, it's called Flower Laser Layers. I used that with my Cuddle Bug and cut out a whole bunch of shapes and then I it's just a whole bunch of shapes it doesn't matter what color your paper if they match or anything because you're just using them as mask there's a couple I actually used and then you're just going to put your temporary adhesive on there I'll get you a piece of paper that I was working on here and you just stick them down and you move them around until you're happy with the shape and then you just um, apply your ink I, again I like using these little cat eye ink pads because they're small and they're easy to work with and then uh, when you get it all inked you just um, pull your shapes up and when you're finished you'll have this masked background that you created. I suppose you could just glue these down. What would be different was you'd be building up your layers, but I, I just really like this effect. It almost looks like an old piece of wallpaper that's been painted over and then maybe um, some of it's been stripped away. I just I really love it. So I hope you give it a try. Um, you can make your own mask, create it using uh, hand punches or a cuddle bug if you have it or some other kind of die cutting machine if you don't have either one of those what I would suggest is you could stamp your shapes and cut them out and use your temporary adhesive and put them on your paper and mask around them I mean apply your ink around them for the same effect it's really cool I hope you give it a try